She has been the Woman Aviator of the Year. She's probably the singly most important lady aviator in the United States of America and the Western world, and is probably going to be the first Western woman into space. Is that a safe prediction looking into the stars, Jerry Cobb? We hope so. I just wish that it wasn't necessary for you to add that Western woman into space now, but of course it is. You, uh, I take it, were fairly disappointed when the Russians uh, announced that a lady was uh, in orbit. I was completely disappointed. It was, uh, of course, expected. It's the same thing that uh, we've been saying would happen for two years if the United States didn't start training women astronauts. But still, when it happened, it was a real bitter disappointment that, that now Russia had put the first woman in space, and the best we could do would, would be second. Jerry, when did you start, um, and if this is the wrong word, correct me, lobbying to get women into the space program? Or was it always a part mm -hmm. of NASA's idea? the NASA, to accommodate uh, the ladies in the program? I think it's always been a part of their thinking that uh, eventually we will put women into space. Uh, NASA's attitude was that there's just no hurry about it. Why should we, you know, do it right away? There's more important things we ought to be doing. Now, that's their attitude. It's totally different than mine. I've been working on it for three years, and I felt that as long as we were going to do it, eventually we should go ahead and do it in the as soon as possible, preferably before Russia did, although that's impossible now. But it should be done as soon as possible in order that we won't be any further behind than we already are in space. Well, if you'll pardon me for saying this, if uh, the Russians have already done it, mm -hmm. it's proof that ladies can handle themselves. Why in the Western program do you think there is a, a need, if you feel there is a need for women in space? Well, it's the same thing as, as is there a need for men in space? I mean, if we're going to send a human being into space, we should send the one most qualified. And in, in certain areas, women have a lot to offer, and other areas men do. I think that we ought to use both. Now, can I ask you where these uh, areas are that women have more to offer than the men? Well, of course, the obvious ones are that women weigh less and require less weight, food, and oxygen. So there's a considerable weight saving. Or, taken another way, you could go up in the same booster, go up higher, or stay up a lot longer. Than a man could. And of course, uh, every hour you can st stay in space, you learn a lot more. The other advantages the doctors and scientists tell us is uh, uh, women, well, from a psychological standpoint, which will become increasingly important on longer space voyages, where women can sit uh, in confined quarters and do tedious work over a longer period of time. They require less stimulation. Men want to be up and around and doing things. And on uh, flights, you know, where it might be months, perhaps even a six, eight months going out to Mars or Venus and back if you've got a small spaceship and, and limited facilities. Well, uh, psychologists say women would definitely be much uh, more able to withstand the isolation and the boredom of a flight like this than men can. Of course, men, uh, I still say one is not better than the other. Men are physically stronger than women. women. And uh, this is a very definite uh, advantage in their favor, but it, I think it ought to complement each other, men and women on certain space voyages, and, and there's certainly no competition between the two. There are none. You wouldn't, you, you know no. the, uh, the uh, original seven astronauts personally, oh, yes. do you? Yes, How I do they feel about your presence <laughs> there? <coughs> I know the seven Mercury astronauts, and um, I, they're a real fine bunch of boys. They really are, or men, I should say. Uh, they, they're just a real, real great group, and I certainly wouldn't want to detract from anything that they have done in space or will be doing in space. But I do say that there is also room for, to utilize women's capabilities in space also. Well, it's not your opinion that I'm quoting here now, but other people say that the, the seven astronauts are a bunch of complainers and that you're not. You, there was an article in which uh, someone was quoted as saying that during their training period they complained taking the same tests that you did. Oh, I don't know. I, I heard that from various sources. and. Uh, I was, I just felt that I was so privileged to be able to go through these tests and be the first woman to do so that I just wasn't about to complain about anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about those tests. You took all of the same sorts of psychological and physical tests that the original astronauts did, and you, we know now, passed them all with flying colors. How did you first get to take these tests? I was asked by, uh, <coughs> pardon me, Dr. Loveless and General Flickinger to be the first woman to go through this these uh, astronaut tests. This was in 1959, and both of them had just come back from a scientific meeting in Moscow. At that time, they had heard that the Russians were going to train women cosmonauts, and this was over three years ago. 
So they asked me, they thought we ought to get together and start doing something. They asked me if I would be the first woman to undergo the astronaut test, which I was couldn't say yes fast enough. And uh, in February of 60, I went out and started through the, the test. For the last three years, I've been doing everything I can to, to get the United States to put a woman in space. But I say it wasn't unexpected when Russia sent uh, their cosmonaut up. We've known this for three years that the Russians were training women cosmonauts. You have known that? Yes, it's been a matter of, of knowledge in scientific circles and uh, in our space circles here in this country for over three years. Why do you think then, with you available, passing all of the tests right and left and very quickly, that they didn't make an effort to get you up sooner than you may go? Well, I wish I knew. <laughs> I wish I knew. Uh, there's no legitimate reasons. There's no, uh, no reasons at all why, why we haven't used women astronauts. They've, they've made some statements like, well, well, we don't have any women in this country that are jet test pilots, and, and this is one of the requirements to enter our testing program. Well, this was uh, disproved when I went through the test and passed them. I, I didn't have jet test pilot experience, but I still passed the same test that the, the male military jet test pilots had. And, of course, it's been totally disproved now when Russia sends Valentina up, who was a parachute jumper and a textile factory worker. That was her only background before she entered training. So, like I say, uh, there's no legitimate reasons on why the United States has not included women in their space program. Maybe that says something about the... Uh state of thinking about women in the United States. 